Coming up on today's wrestling news, Liv Morgan kisses Dominic Mysterio to close Monday Night Raw. Becky Lynch has not signed a new WWE contract. Mark Henry is done with AEW. And major updates on the Bray Wyatt adjacent stable in WWE. I'm Adam Wilborn. I'm Michael Hamflitz. And this is the news. And let's dive straight in with the thing that everyone's talking mm -hmm. about after last night's Raw, even if some people in parts of America didn't actually see it. Oh boy. <laughs> it was all over socials yeah. regardless. So uh, Liv Morgan defended her newly won uh, women's title against Becky Lynch in the main event of last night's Raw after winging, winning it at King and Queen of the Ring. And um, we'll talk about some of the Becky Lynch fallout from this in due course. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a steel cage match. Probably the most violent steel cage match I've seen in the past week, easily. Um, I'm joking, of course. Jesus, that was a bloodbath on Double or Nothing. We'll be reviewing it later on today, by the way, on the What Culture Wrestling Podcast channel. I wouldn't have gone across that. I'd have just left that one right there. Oh, don't you worry, I've got a few more. Um, but, steel cage match, and it looked like Becky Lynch had the match won. She yep. was crawling out of the door when a story that had been kind of across the entire show reared its ugly head. Mm -hmm. So, yes, Dominic Mysterio had come out again and opened the door for Becky Lynch, a bit like he did at Queen, Queen, King and Queen of the Ring to, like, I'll oh, help her win. Oh, I'm bugging it up. Mm -hmm. uh, except this time, Braun Strowman had been chasing JD McDonough around the arena. This time he runs around, barges into Dom and Dominic Mysterio. Dom falls into the door, slams it in Becky Lynch's head, uh, and then Liv Morgan crawls out and retains her women's title. And then just before, or just after, depending on where you are, the show went off the air. Yeah. They locked lips, Michael Hamflet. Uh. Um, Dominic Mysterio either looked confused, yeah. surprised, uh -huh. I wrote down a few other, uninterested, or my guess, a character, I know he's like married or engaged in real life, a character that has never been kissed. Yeah, there was, I think, um, an intended ambiguity at this one. Yes. Like Liv Morgan obviously plants the big kiss on him. Dominic Mysterio certainly doesn't appear to see it coming, but then nor does he stop it when it's happening and all mm. that sort of thing. Um, and typically within wrestling, that like they'll either give you and kind of on the nose tell as to whether or not the characters like it or not, there'll be a push away. And obviously there could have been a push away before she was even able to continue kissing. This went on for more than a couple of seconds, shall we say. Awkwardly was, long. But it was all from Liv Morgan, it appeared. So that will be his plausible deniability on this ongoing thing with Rhea Ripley. He, uh, what we did get additionally on Raw was uh, we know that Dom and Rhea have been in touch because Damien was like, I can't believe you did what you did at King Queen of the Ring. Like, you know how he was, he was like, yeah, yeah, I know, I spoke to mommy and that. So he knows he's already in the bad books. Uh, just Doghouse doesn't cover it, does it? Have you seen Raw yet? No, not yet. I'm yeah. just having a little bit of a wrist. Don't go like, don't go like. <laughs> it's like the episode of uh, Friends where like um, Ross is trying to gather up all the newspapers for Monica sees the thing, but now the newspapers are Twitter and the coverage is everywhere and that picture splashed across WWE's own Twitter page. Yeah, in case you missed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and plenty of people did. I'd love Maybe it. Maybe it is on these course. And Dominic was watching the USA Network. Well, end of the show. It was on purpose. We fixed it. What a bloody idiot. Anyway, get on, on with my day. I definitely don't need to look deeper into it. That's, that's, that's going to get him out of all the trouble. Yeah. They should use that. That's like when uh, Matt Sadal had that near horrific slip on the turnbuckle. Yeah. And they did the BTE skit where Michael Nakazawa was oiling the turnbuckle. Like, what Insane. a potential workaround. That is yeah. like, Rhea's like, oh, I off to bed for me. I'll not check Raw for seven days. Uh, more on this when we get to the Twitter questions, by the way, because we've got an overarching Liv Morgan Judgment Day question yes. to get to. Yes, and more on the fallout of this match, because let's talk about Becky Lynch's mm. involvement in all this too. So she tweeted after the match, there's a picture of her walking out of the building and it said, to be continued. Uh, earlier on in the night, she'd uh, had a, a bit of a segment with Lyra Valkyria, mm -hmm. her protégé, about like how important it is to win, and if you win, you come back, and all that sort of thing. But she has lost twice in a row to Liv Morgan. And this is, of course, amidst rumours that she has yet to sign her contract. Rumours that have been confirmed by Fightful Select. This is true. She has not yet signed. We've been reporting... Becky Lynch potentially re-signing for yeah. it feels like months yeah, now. Yeah, assumed it would have just happened by now. Yeah, this is it. There's, there's a certain Cody Rhodes and AEW vibe to this where it just feels like, all right, you're working as you're going to sign your new deal. And yet we are getting to the wire. Um, her contract is due to expire this weekend. Um, and according to Fight for Select, the report adds that should she re-sign for WWE or indeed potentially sign elsewhere, AEW or not, she can expect to earn the biggest contract in women's wrestling history. Um or at least that's the you know that's the speculation around the number that is being talked about should Becky Lynch mm. resign. So yes, what we are currently seeing is a shoot. Even if down the line they will fold this into the work because they've leaned quite hard on Becky Lynch maybe wrapping up 
Yes, exactly. Yeah, they, 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 they could easily be using this as part of a storyline. Mm -hmm. I still have, if you have to make me guess, I think that Becky Lynch will re-sign with WWE, but anything's possible. And even if you're WWE and you've got a sort of handshake deal of like, you know what, you kind of wanted to take some time off after WrestleMania and then yeah. with the rear injury, you kind of had to step up. So why don't you just take a couple of months off uh, and then we'll sort all this out when you come back. But we, we're on the, under the understanding that you're going to come back. Like, stranger things in wrestling have happened. Mm -hmm. And someone going, yeah, 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 cool. And then just showing up on the other show. She's been, uh, she'll be, excuse me, a free agent after June the 1st. Uh, and I always go back to the Ariel Hawani interview before WrestleMania, where she was trying to be coy and simultaneously say, I'm not going anywhere. There was that... Um, Darby Allen thing of, well, I'm just here. I, yeah. like, I like it here. Um, but it, as you say, it's wrestling. You never say never. And is it that wild in this current era to think of arguably the biggest star a company has jumping? There are very few people. You're batting zeros and suddenly your mind gets changed. And there are people with big zeros that they can offer to make this happen as well. So we will see, I guess. They have certainly, if she's done, she's done the job on the way out, which again yeah. is just a way people leave, but none of her star aura has been diminished. So it's obviously, uh, she's a huge get wherever she goes. Or maybe she wants to do more acting work. She pops up in yeah. billions, mm -hmm. if I remember rightly. She's done some other bits as well. Yeah. Uh, and maybe with the WWE contracts being the way they are, maybe it's just easier for to be like, you know what, I'm going to go off and do this, and then I'll come back and just be available to wrestle whenever, as and when you need me post, let's say, SummerSlam. Seth Rollins has re-signed, but this would, of course, allow her to raise their daughter yeah, not on just, a bus. You she know, could like, just go uh, off and be a mum, yeah, like, exactly. If she wants to do that, there's like, the world, uh, deservedly so, is Becky Lynch's oyster right now. Yeah, where would you like to see Becky Lynch end up? Uh, what do you see in her future? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, and we'll bring you all the upda updates as and when we get them. Speaking of updates, an update on Mark Henry. We've been speculating on his future mm. uh, and he is done with AEW um, today his contract expires in fact he was on Boston Open Radio which is rare for him uh, <laughs> saying my god Tony the AEW is set to expire tomorrow the 28th I wanted to address that matter Tony Khan said at the press conference that he was very happy and proud what we did together I feel the exact same way I appreciate everything at AEW with Tony Khan and the Khan family I had a great experience and I do feel it's time to, for me to take more time to handle themarkhenry.com and the remarkable brand and focus that attention on what my next steps are I'm not going to be renewing my deal. He's been with AEW, of course, since May of 2021. Said the decision was mutual uh, and the experience in the Jacksonville-based promotion was nothing but positive, even if there are a few things that he didn't have a chance to finish. Hmm. Uh, what does he mean by that specifically, do you think? Is there any more wrestling in Mark Henry's future? He's got a lot left in the tank. <laughs> that's what he always used to say. He has said that in the past. Um, yeah, it's. I think AEW fans will see uh, in terms of an on-screen presence or you know, or just even an audio woman, he was a commentator, will see Mark Henry as just the rampage guy. Well, uh, looks like we've been in a hotel. It's down for the main event. But uh, now, of course, in WWE, CM Punk was one of the people to name check him as a valuable asset backstage. Yeah. I imagine some wrestlers will feel the same way as well um, in terms of what he could offer in, you know, like experience yeah. and just all that sort of stuff. Interesting to me is that he left WWE as a guy that you kind of imagined would always be kept around as a lifer or something in a very different era to the one that we're in now. Mm -hmm. So this was obviously pre Vince Man's exit, pre TKO, a different world. Like yeah. 2021, I think he yeah. parted with. If you recall, the last time we saw Mark Henry on screen was when he was he was recovering from a surgery. Yeah, and they put him out there and like, was it double crutches or a walking? Yeah, like a knee. Yeah, like, yeah. Lent forward just so Randy Orton at the time, a heel, could bully him for like being washed up and out. Like, that was Mark Henry. Like, well, is that when he had the night vision goggles? It might have been around that same time. It was a difficult period for a lot of us. Uh, so, yeah, that like... That sort of they wanted, I think, to leave that as Mark Henry's on screen legacy when that clearly isn't it. You see him, you know, in these busted open things and just out, you know, in, in the public face, yeah, yeah, yeah. still got a profile. So I wouldn't, I would be uh, surprised if it's just, I can understand why he would say it's just website stuff, but I don't know. I feel like there's more Mark well, Henry. Maybe he wants to do more busted open stuff. Obviously, he's doing yeah. uh, great stuff on there with all the uh, working with his mates and mm -hmm. having a great time with it. Uh, maybe he just wants to go home and go. Fishing. I don't know. Uh, like, honestly, like Mark, it's great. Like, keep all the busted open stuff. Give it a go. Like, you get yourself up the podcast charts. You're doing great. Need any help? You know who we are. So, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> the, uh, altitude's a bit, whoa, up there. I get a nosebleed sometimes, but it's, you can, keep it up. Keep it up. Uh, 
One last thing before bonus people have already switched on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, latest codes, the QR codes. Uh, there's sort of been developments on this. So, you know, we we wouldn't report this every week because there's stuff all the time on the whites at this point. We've had the teasers for a while, but they've started acknowledging it more on telly as well. Yeah, it feels like a point of difference at this point. WWE are now the commentators are acknowledging that they've noticed the feed getting disrupted and like some of the QR codes and some of the weird clues and that. The latest one for those that are not keeping up with the the lore, I guess, of the ongoing Wyatt story was that um, the therapist that had featured in segments with the feed and then a recent QR code has shown like a, a therapy session before she mysteriously disappeared. She has now been found within the story of all of this, um, which reveals a little bit more of the potential Wyatt 6. Um, this follows on from last week when on uh, what would have been Bray Wyatt's birthday, there were uh, um, there was a figure who was shown writing letters to people about like where they you know where they've gone wrong in life and where they could help, um, which featured the likes of Nikki Cross, Eric Rowan, Dexter Loomis, and Joe Gacy. That was who the letters were going to, and makes sense. Thought that they were coming from Uncle Howdy, who again is the the character that is perhaps inhabiting the spirit of Bray Wyatt and all this. It's all the same names and the same people and everything that this. Little uh, this latest sort of white rabbit teasers taking yeah, people to, yeah. to fantasy book. Um, so it's all, it's all the names that have been mentioned so far. But uh, the internet sleuthing has also dug a little bit deeper to find that there are various teasers towards potential dates. There have been references to things around the uh, June seventeenth edition of Monday Night Raw, oh. which would hail from Corpus Christi, te- Texas, or. Uh, the Clash at the Castle in Scotland, oh, um, which is just, uh, just a few days later, I do believe. So, or maybe a few days before. So there are sort of it's again, it's all very hypothetical, depending on which clues you choose to follow. But people are now finding links to those dates within these these detailed videos as well. You know, there's, they've uh, they've incorporated them now in WWE 2K24. Yeah, there's like various ones that are just online. So if you're really in the weeds on this, there's so many different yeah, directions yeah. you can take. They are putting the work in. Um, but yeah, this seems a bit more, um, I don't know, on the nose than the original White Rabbit one. Yeah. They didn't acknowledge that until the very night he returned, did they? So uh, they're letting you know that it's going to be the exact people you expect, the exact characters you expect, and the, the vibe of all this. But it's sooner than we think, maybe. Excited slash nervous to see mm-hmm. what this looks like. Yeah. Supernatural stuff I'm always a bit iffy with, but obviously, and especially with the legacy of Bray Wyatt being attached to all this. Yeah. Uh, nevertheless, excited to see what the names that you've mentioned, uh, what they do with the names that you've mentioned there. And also, we're going to find out in what? Less than three weeks, presumably. Or three yeah. weeks to yesterday. A glancing shot of uh, a female on yes. board Who was that? down that some people thought could have been Derek A. But again, that's like that. Again, that's freeze frame stuff you've got to see in the, in the sort of a flashpoint moment. So, yeah, it's all heating up in a way. I think like fans of this sort of type of stuff really love as well. Like they, that's yeah. why they do these things because people enjoy going in. Oh and yeah, absolutely. And that. So yeah, if it's for you, uh, get hyped. Yeah, very excited to see what that looks like. Right, let's move on to your Twitter questions. At what culture WWE, of course, on X, of course, if you want to get in touch with us. Uh, first question today comes from Eddie Zamharry, who says, Hello, boys. After what happened on Raw, how long until Liv Morgan takes over as the new Judgment Day leader? I don't know, but it seems like the the thing with it, the cool thing about the revenge tour is it gave Liv Morgan a series of aims with which to get her to the title. She's got the title, uh, and now obviously the revenge moves on to the Dominic Mysterio thing. Per the kiss, she can say she's got Dominic. There's no um, ambiguity from her side of you compared to when we saw her on the backstage mm. or in the car or with the bandana or whatever. We're past the teasing point for her. So does taking or attempting to take the judgment day not feel like another, well, I'll have that then as well. Like the way that keep, it keeps her um, goal oriented. Yes. As like corporate speak would say, that becomes this next thing on her. She should do a Cody tweet with a list. Why not follow me? She should yeah. do a little tweet with like the, you know, the list of opponents that Cody wanted. Just like, all the things that Liv Morgan wants to take from Rhea Ripley. Just do that. Yeah. Main event in Australia show. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I like that because as well, you can buy quite a few members of the Judgment Day or weasels who will just go wherever. Yeah, absolutely. Talking of people like JD McDonough here. You know, I feel like Finn Balor and Damien Priest are going to fall out soon. She should just make a new t-shirt. I've got the one where it's just the names on with the R-Truth stuck on with sellotape. <laughs> yes. Jamie McDonough could never get his name. She should just make a new one that says like Morgan and Mysterio and Crimer and Wedgme. I love it. New Judgment Day t-shirt. Yeah. What's it going to be like when Rhea Ripley comes back? She's going to kick her ass. It's, it's going to be great, great, isn't it? It's going to be good stuff. Like, I want my title back. And Don, uh, uh, <laughs> I want yeah. my title back. On that in a minute. Um, Tony TV says, hello, legends. So Nia and Gunther won their respective tourneys. They sure did. Wish I'd, I wish, I just wish someone would have called it. I'm just, you know what, I'm really tired. I mean, Eric is keeping me up at night at the moment, but also, I'm tired of being right all the time. He's the only real one in the game. Queen! My queen. Oh. 
I can, we, we're a bit delayed with everything with the bank holiday. Thanks, banks. Uh, <laughs> here in the UK, me and him are going to review King and Queen of the Ring tomorrow. Yeah. And let me tell you, when we get to that spot with Lyra Valkyria, I am going to blow my lid off. That and, was incredible. And arguably more important than the review is going to be the SmackDown preview because Gunther returned on Raw with his crown by his side. It's part of more for him of a title shot to make a point. Not Nia Jax. They have advertised a coronation <laughs> for that show. Plunk it on. So, uh, we're going to go daft for it. Um, who has the better shot, though, of walking out of SummerSlam as new champion? My choice is Nia, quite right, Tolly TV. <laughs> uh, as a likely candidate for winning and becoming champion, I feel like Gunther will finally win his at WrestleMania 41. Like, that take is rooted in the idea of just how far WWE can go with Gunther. It's been such a success story so far, isn't it? And uh, he's lost the Intercontinental title in a defeat that we knew was a loss upwards. Uh, that booking is almost the modest approach. Like, you're not just dreaming big for Nia, you're dreaming yeah. even bigger for Gunther. So I understand the rationale in that. I think they're going to go with Gunther. Yeah, some I, think, I think they're both going to win the titles. Maybe. It'll make it, make King and Queen of the Ring back to the levels yeah. it used to be. And I assume SummerSlam is only a few weeks before Bash in Berlin, if my yep. date is correct. Mm -hmm. So that's it. I, I think want him going in as champ. Gunther, it's... Um, it's, it's, it's the, sorry to interrupt. It's the classic thing of like, oh... Uh, Arbitrary first title defense. All right, but in Berlin and potentially Ely Dragunov, let's say, Ooh, like careful. which is a, you know a match the seeding on Raw each week with the two of them when it when it's they're kind of always in each other's orbit at this mm. point, aren't they? And people want to see it. Um, yeah, I think they're going to go with Gunther. The fact that uh, like I love this world title picture on Raw, but the the fact that like Damien Priest feels so under threat from Drew McIntyre in Scotland, who feels under threat from CM Punk brackets general. Um, Gunther and Drew is SummerSlam worthy, if yeah. that's where you're going. Um, or Gunther and Priest, I guess. They touched on the Gunther-Drew history, of course, when they pop just past each other in the ring. Yeah, um, I just think he feels like a perfect fit. And not to sort of, again, particularly neg the world title, but it just feels an easier call to make than if he was, say, facing Cody. I agree, yeah. Uh, that match, again, huge for another day. But, uh, yeah, I think Gunther's winning it all at SummerSlam. Yeah. Hey, yeah, could it, and I'm, if not, you want to do I'm some, not, I'm with you as well, yeah. And if, he, if he wants, you want to do something big with him at 41, have him drop the World Heavyweight Championship and just kill everyone in the Rumble. Yeah. He calls his shot with Cody, for example. Although The Rock and Roman Reigns might have a few things to say about that. <laughs> Robert Smith, uh, a bit delayed. Uh, sorry, bank holiday here in the UK on Monday. Thank you, Robert, but we've got the cure for your common content. Uh, what do you think was the wildest spot last night, from Sunday night, uh, from Double or Nothing Anarchy in the Arena? Uh, Adam landing on his ankle, Darby getting hung up by his broken foot and kicked his broken nose. <laughs> <laughs> or Jack Perry getting set on fire. It's all of them, isn't it? But just as a, as a bit of fun, because I'm just glad they include it, I'm going to go with that boss. I was so pleased. What the f was that? I was so pleased to, uh, to paraphrase uh, a Conrad Bruce Pritchard thing. They hit that mother f with a bus. Because uh, <laughs> it's... Remember when we reported it and, like... Only in wrestling, and probably only with Darby Allen, can you sort of report man hit by bus, and it'd be a bit like... By a bus. Funny. <laughs> like, it's... I'm surprised... The only thing I'm surprised about is that the bus hit him rather than Darby Allen, like, leaping above it with a kickflip because he happened to be <laughs> yeah. skateboarding across the road or something. Like, it, what a visual. What a, like, the whole thing was a match of visuals, ultimately. And, like, the fact that it said scapegoat on a bus meant they'd prep the bus. Yeah. I like, I like that sort of amount of thought. Get that bus ready just in case, because Darby Allen's the type of guy that's going to skateboard in front of it. So, yeah, uh, it's Darby Allen for me. What about you? Look out, the bus is coming, and everybody's jumping, except for Darby Allen, who can't quite keep his balance. The wheels of steel are turning, but Darby's foot is hurting. So if you like to wrestle, please, Darby, move your vessel. We, we like Darby. We like, we like Darby. More stuff like that on wrestle culture every single week. Uh, my favorite spot, aside from all those ones we mentioned, was the, I'm going to cheat and just pick a different match, uh, the house call to a spearing Christian Cage. Yeah. I thought it was magnificent. But yeah, he's, I think, he's, I kind think, of a, he's kind of a purist when it comes to the in ring more than the other spots. I think uh, Real Fire, Crimea River, uh, that's oh my, my favourite part. <laughs> Jesus what God. the hell was that? <laughs> we'll talk about it later with Sidgwick, uh, What Cool Dressing Podcast, wherever you get your podcasts from. But thank you for all your questions and thank you for joining us. Uh, have it out in the comments section below. And while you're on it, why not check out this video as well?